Hey everyone. Thanks for joining us. We're really sorry we can't be here with you in person. Um, and also wanted to let you know that Adrian Fisher won't be able to record his part of this at all. He's recovering um, from a little bit of illness and we wish him a speedy recovery and, and a thorough one as well. And don't worry, it's not COVID, so we're very pleased about that. Um, so while this isn't the ideal way of holding a conference, props to the uh, Australian organizers for everything they've done to make this um, work as best as it can. And um, while, you know, a virtual conference isn't quite the way that we usually enjoy community, it does fit into our values, right? Well-being, building community regardless of the conditions and relying on the strengths of the, um, the community to build the solutions. So I've decided to record this live, um, glitches and all, this is a one take thing. So um, I apologize ahead of time for um, uh, any stumbles, but I'm hoping it also keeps you a little bit more engaged and interested than um, otherwise. You can count the number of times that I mess something up. Um, and also, um, I'm pretty sure that like me, you're really sick of sitting in front of um, flat computers, listening to things in kind of this 2D world. So um, I'm, I'm hoping this helps a little bit. So my role is to give you an overview of um, psychological sense of community that really fits the, um, the theory and the concepts that are going to follow um, in Terry and Isabel's work. Um, and um, so I'll go first and then you'll you'll hear from them. So I know that a lot of you are really familiar with um, psychological sense of community, and I'm hoping that this uh, this um, introduction really serves to kind of invigorate, reinvigorate your thinking and your plans to investigate using this important concept and variable in community psych um, and, and in community life in general, I would argue. Um, uh, a note on the way that I'm using acronyms, um, PSOC, you see, and then the P slash SOC. I use PSOC as a, um, out of respect for the pivotal work that was done by Seymour Saracen, by um, uh, Macmillan and Chavez, but I also want to recognize the work that's been done for up from by others using SOC um, as small OC. Um, and so I'm using a P slash SOC, but when I talk and my work, I, I use SOC. So I'm gonna talk about some of the beginnings of the theory, some of the expansion that I've done in my work, and then specifically about PSOC and diversity that really relates to the work that Terry and Isabel will present after me. So, you know, we can define community in two ways, right? There's at least two types. One is territorial, the other relational. Territorial is that place-based idea that it's a city, it's a small town, it's your block, it's your neighborhood, your school, your gym. Um, and it's the interpersonal ties that take place within the proximity that are important. And the proximity, historically speaking, wasn't necessarily a choice. Um, so this is that place where we live, we work, we worship, we play. Um, made up of uh, the, the micro level, the organization, the locale. Um, we're thinking about how it meets our needs for living in that setting. Um, what's the atmosphere of it? And it, there's been a lot of talk, not just in the US, but um, Putnam in 95 was one of the first in his book, Bowling Alone, to really talk about the decreasing importance of territories in US life and in in um, a number of places globally. So this is in comparison to the relational community where our ties are, are communal, um, they're based on social interaction. And as we know these days, that social action interaction can be uh, virtual or in real world. So we're not talking about things limited by geography, self-help groups, clubs, religious, um, larger organizations, voluntary associations, political groups and parties. Um, if you're in the US, um, hopefully we've, we've gotten through this all by the time you're seeing this and we're all seeing this. Um, so community is a way of life. It's, it's in some ways theoretical, it's that macro system. Um, and Hunter and Rieger back in 86 argued that this was increasing in the US and 
we can also see that globally with the rise of technology. And so I don't think that this was something that um, stopped increasing um, in 86. So the territorial community is, is the social unit, the systems that were developed to perform certain services. Um, and we can think about this again in a historical sense where all of these things had to happen where you are. And in fact, all of those components that now we can get um, in relational communities had to happen within a territorial, just about our, all where we could interact because there wasn't the ability to send uh, letters and telegrams, let alone FaceTime and um, DM and all of those sorts of things. So all of our economic needs were met by our territory, all of our socialization um, needs and learning was met that way. Social control was local, participation, social support. In a relational community, on the other hand, some of those things don't happen, but a number of them are repeated. Um, and the relational communities um, really are promoting identity and value and a local and dispersed sense of leanness to kind of um, use um, uh, Wiesenfeld's term. So again, socialization, those shared values that are endorsed in groups, social control, usually psychological, it's not as easy to do a physical social control in a relational community unless it also shares a locale. Um, participation, whether that's virtual, whether that's based on travel to be in um, the same place at the same time, sometimes other forms of distant participation, and then social support, again, virtual, psychological, um, long distance. And variability exists within both territorial and we will talk about um, relational communities. There's qualitative differences. Sometimes um, these are defined through different divides um, and, and the creation of sub areas of territorial communities. There's also quantitative differences. Um, the distribution across spatial areas, um, those contrasts across sub areas that might be um, economic as well as demographic and ecological. So there's a number of ways of conceptualizing this variability and this experience of territorial and relational communities. We can think about sub-communities as uh, capturing that variability uh, so that we have the softball team that operates within the high school that's operating within the city that's operating within the state, et cetera, et cetera. Um, oh. Wiesenfeld, as I said, talked about the, the concept of weenness and also the myth, of, the myth of weenness. That is that there is macro belonging, that belonging to the whole, the country, the state, the city, the high school. Um, and there's also the macro belonging um, that we need to treat very seriously, the micro belonging to that softball club or to the the. Uh, band or to the arts organization or to the um, upper level math organization or to the kids who are out in the back um, smoking and skipping school. Of course, these days they're doing that virtually or they're doing that and causing a pandemic to increase, but that's a whole other issue. We can think about that variability as being both bridged and um, accentuated through social capital uh, the work of network analysis. So is there bridging? Is there just the bonding that happens within or are there shared um, all sorts of things, not only support, but ideas and values and sense of belonging across. And then we can think about the variability and the experience of community as being conceptualized through psychological sense of community. So psychological sense of community is that perception of a bond to community. Right, it's territorial or relational. Seymour Saracen first talked about it in his 74 book. Macmillan and Chavez are credited with a model that a lot of people uh, have followed to this day and the elements of it. And there are, there are four components to psychological sense of community. There's membership, there's bi-directional influence, there's an integration and fulfillment of needs, and there's a shared emotional connection. Um, 
and and the the membership assumes boundaries. So we are necessarily suggesting to use an in group and there's an out group. And membership is defined by those of us who are in the in group. There's a common symbol system, oftentimes uniforms, colors, cheers, chants, songs. Um, we're seeing that play out quite um, effectively and in a scary way um, in the U.S. election and in political organizations around the globe. There's emotional safety in membership. There's a sense of belonging and identification. There's a personal investment that helps us uh, um, really cement our sense of membership. The, the dues that we pay, whether those are economic or in other ways, the effort, the devotion, et cetera. And these are the sorts of things that make it hard for us to give up membership because we have invested so much and there's a certain tipping point that has to happen to, to um, walk away um, from that effort and, and that uh, those dues that have been paid the balance and bi-directional influence is really important. Um, we don't want that organization to be entirely uh, commanding what we do, but it, it makes a difference that we have a voice and we feel like we are part of something that helps to shape us and give us um, direction. Integration and fulfillment of needs, shared values, just basically getting our needs and our resources uh, uh, our needs met, our resources shared, and then that emotional connection, the contact, the quality of the interaction, closure in um, the work of Macmillan and Chavez and others really matters. Um, the strong valent event, which we are all going through with this pandemic, spiritual bonds as well make a difference. So there's been a ton of work done on PSFC, and um, hopefully some of you in the audience today um, have been part of that great work. Um, but basically, in a nutshell, um, high PSOC moderates negative settings. It predicts participation in community development, and that can be at a, at a, um, um, a collective level. So you don't yourself have to have the higher PSOC, but you, if you are in a community that does, you may be more likely to participate as well. It's associated with subjective well-being. A lot of the um, work on schools has found that it's higher in smaller settings where we have a role. Think about Sarban's underpopulated settings. In some of my work, I've made a few expansions to the idea of PSOC as Macmillan and Chavez and Saracen first talked about it. Um, one back in 96, hard to believe that that was so long ago, um, is was in thinking about PSOC as not a unipolar dummy variable, but rather a bipolar continuous variable. So rather than any PSOC being a positive PSOC, thinking about PSOC as having a positive uh, uh, valence to it, a neutral, as well as negative and everything in between. So positive PSOC is, you know, it's important for me to find out what's going on in my community, um, how it's going to affect me. Neutral, I, I don't know. I just go, you know, if I don't have too much to do around here. Negative. I don't go out here. I don't start things with people. I don't bother people. I stay in my house. And I lock my doors. The second expansion that my work has taken a look at and has has um, brought about um, is thinking about the PSOC isn't just to a single referent or primary community. In the historical um, years, the uh, historical years, is that how you say that? In the olden days, however you want to say that, this was the case. As I said before, you know, we couldn't be communicating and getting our needs met from afar. So work and school and family and recreation and worship, all of those things were in one place. Now, however, we can think about multiple senses of community for multiple communities, both geographic, territorial, and relational. Um, so in one of my earlier studies, someone said, um, I don't care for too many women, but the women here are pretty good. You know, I like associating with them. That distinction between two physical settings, actually, but the ways they operated inside and outside of the doors of the Caroline Center. So when you put these two together, we can think about um, a different groupings that are falling at different valence, valences of um, positive to negative PSOC. So in this, you know, random example, religious group has a high positive PSOC, the block level has negative, um, you get the picture. 
So the third expansion to some extent or um, discussion of PSOC that I think is really important and that is particularly important for the work um, that um, is going to be um, talked about in just a moment um, is this idea that is there a PSOC diversity dialectic? Um, Townley Clues and Green, Green and Franco first asked this question, Are there is there a core value conflict between the homogeneity of PSOC and the heterogeneity of diversity? Um, others also wrote about how this might be an issue, Neil and Neil, uh, Stavala et al. Um, and we followed this up in 2017 with a special issue in AJCP that really um, talked about this. And my argument at the time was that while appearing to be in opposition, this conflict's not inherent in the concepts or their values, but rather in the operation of them in the, in the real world today. And I think we can bridge diversity and PSOC. Um, and that bridge is built on the values that really matter in those two conceptualizations, a respect for the simultaneous micro and macro belonging um, that we can think about in Wiesenfeld's work. That is a redefinition of us and them and, and we. Um, and I think that the idea of multiple senses of community and nested micro and macro communities really is redemptive of diversity. So as such, as we care about diversity, however it's defined, um, not just for the beauty of those old fashioned Benetton ads, but as a, as a proxy, I think, for inclusion. So it is the inclusion and not just diversity that really is the most important value for community psychology. And it's inclusion as well that's central to building a sense of belonging, mutual influence, shared emotional connection and fulfillment of needs. So PSOC, I'd argue, is a virtue for the individual and for community well-being. And hence the extent to which diversity and PSOC are in conflict is the extent to which diversity exists without inclusion. So I believe that as we care as a field about PSOC, um, we care about inclusion. So I kind of want to end with this concept as a way of, of bringing in Terry and Isabel's work that a diversity that brings people together across differences that doesn't change their underlying experience or inequality is a diversity without inclusion. And, and without inclusion, there may well be no PSOC and there is no us. So with that, I would love for you to stay tuned for what Terry and Isabel have to talk about from their two empirical studies. And I wish you all well, and I hope that we'll be together again soon as a community in real life. And thank you very much for tuning in. Hello, everybody. This is Terry Mandarini speaking from Italy on behalf of a group of colleagues. Our contribution to the symposium is a study exploring the relationships between values and sense of community. Why did we focus on values? As we all know, values are desirable states of the world that orient people, attitudes and behavior, and that influence the way we relate to others. In the last two decades, Solomon Schwartz's value system has been widely used in psychology research. Of special interest and relevance to community psychology is research connecting values to well-being, civic involvement and prosocial behavior, as well as studies highlighting the function of values in preventing antisocial behavior. Our interest in values lays in the twofold nature of values. They are both individual and collective, psychological and cultural. And so they tell us something about the individuals, but they also tell us something about what the individuals who live in the same community share 
in terms of basic assumptions. There are very few studies that have explored the role of values in promoting or discouraging sense of community, and each of them has referred to a different value theory. So the picture is actually incomplete and inconclusive. Our study is based on three research questions. Which values are related to sense of community? Are these values consistent with two different notions of sense of community? That is the traditional model proposed by Macmillan and Chavis and the model proposed by Noel and Boyd of sense of community as responsibility. And finally, do these patterns of relation change according to community characteristics, and namely community stability and community cohesion? We refer to Schwarz's theory that identifies 10 basic human values, self-direction, stimulation, hedonism, success, power, security, conformity, tradition, benevolence, and universalism. These values can be grouped along two bipolar dimensions. The first dimension sees openness to change opposed to conservation and captures the conflict between values that emphasize independence of thought, action, and willingness to change, self-direction, stimulation, and hedonism values, and values that emphasize order, social norms, safety, and preservation of the past, that is, security, conformity, and tradition. The second dimension juxtaposes self-transcendence to self-enhancement and captures the conflict between values that emphasize concern for the welfare and disinterests of others, universalism and benevolence, and values that emphasize the pursuit of one's own interests, success and dominance, that is power, success and hedonism. Which were our expectations? Uh, Self-transcendence and conservation values would relate positively to sense of community, whereas the respective conflicting values of self-enhancement and openness to change would show no significant relations. We reasoned that both the concern for others entailed in self-transcendence values and the respect for social norms and acceptance of customs expressed in conservation values would be consistent with the notion of sense of community. In Schwarz's model, self-enhancement and openness to change are opposed to self-transcendence and conservation since they emphasize individuals versus groups and change versus stability, but we reason that such opposition would not necessarily occur also in relation to sense of community and then hypothesized that their impact would be non-significant. Our second expectation was that based on the centrality of the belonging component in SOC, we expected a stronger association of conservation value for SOC and a weaker association for SOCR. In contrast, because of the emphasis on feeling responsible for the community, we expect to find a reversed pattern for self-transcendence values, that is, a stronger association for SOCR and a weaker association for SOC. We also expected at a more general level that values will have a greater explanatory power for SOCR compared to SOC. Finally, we hypothesized that community characteristics, namely community stability and community cohesion, would moderate the relations between values and sense of community. Um, our study is a cross-sectional research. We involved more than 1,000 Italian citizens that we recruited through snowball sampling procedures. We asked them to complete a self-repo paper questionnaire uh, containing measures for assessing sense of community, sense of community responsibility, 
basic human values, community cohesion and community stability. So, as hypothesized, we found that self-enhancement and openness to change values had no significant association with SOC and SOCR, whereas self-transcendence and conservation values were positively related to both. Contrary to our expectations, the regression weights of conservation values for SOC and SOCR did not differ significantly. While self-transcendence values had a significantly higher regression weight for SOCR. The overall variance explained by the model was greater for SOCR, as we were expecting. As for the interactions, both community stability and community cohesion interacted with self-transcendence and conservation values in predicting both SOC and SOCR. If we now look at the direction of the slopes, we see one general trend. At low levels of community stability and cohesion, self-transcendence and conservation values are likely to increase both SOC and SOCR. At high levels of community stability and cohesion, the effect is non-significant except in one case, which is the graph with the green frame. In this case, which concerns the interaction of community cohesion and self-transcendence values on stock, we see that at high levels of community cohesion, self-transcendence values are likely to decrease SOC. So let me summarize the main findings of this study. Self-transcendence and conservation values are positively associated to sense of community, and the opposite values of self-enhancement and openness to change values are not. It seems that this is a pattern of associations that is consistent with the conceptualization of both SOC and SOCR. Indeed, self-transcendence values are consonant with positive social interdependence and connection within the community, which is key in sense of community. And in the same vein, conservation values are congruent with respect for community norms that also underpin sense of community. There is no significant difference in the magnitude of the association of conservation values with SOC and SOCR. This suggests that conservation values may be associated to the notion of community itself, irrespectively of how it is defined or what aspects or functions are emphasized. So it's like that every time community itself is evoked, these values may come into play. Self-transcendence values are more strongly related to SOCR, and this is consistent with the notion of SOCR, since this model postulate, explicitly postulates commitment to the community. Finally, the more unstable and loose the community are perceived, the more self-transcendence and conservation values are called into play to sustain sense of community. But, there is a but, Maybe too much cohesion may be incompatible with the fulfillment of self-transcendence value and then result in decrease in SOC. The main implications of our study, of our findings, are that values can be leveraged so as to increase sense of community. Since values are both individual and collective, they can be promoted at two levels. At the community level, values can be enhanced by creating community settings and normative environments that embody and spread these values throughout groups and the community. At the individual level, values can be activated selectively, either by making them the primary focus of attention or making them salient through context, settings and roles. So community-based intervention programs could incorporate activities and actions 
that are specifically designed and aimed at either create value-based environments or activating values in the participants. To conclude, a goal for contemporary community psychology could be to promote the dissemination of self-transcendence values and also of conservation values to support sense of community in unstable and loose community. We are aware that emphasizing conservation values may result in excessively uh, closed community, in community closure. And we're not suggesting that we should indiscriminately leverage them irrespective of the circumstances. However, we should examine when conservation values can counterbalance instability and lose social connections so that they can serve as support to sense of community. But we definitely need much more research to see more clearly what's into these patterns of relations. Thank you very much for your attention. Hello, my name is Isabel Ombrados from the University of Malaga in Spain. First of all, I would like to express my support to all those people who are suffering due to the current pandemic. I would also like to say that it is a pleasure for me to share this symposium with my colleagues Terry Manarini and Ambrosky. The title of my presentation is Sense of Community, Social Integrations, Wellbeing and Health of Migrants. With my presentations, I wish to highlight the importance of a sense of community for the well-being of the migrant population. Migration and adaptation to a new country implies the loss of sense of community from the culture of origin and the development of a new sense of community as part of the integration process in the new environment. Migrants must develop new strategies of adaptation. This is why sense of community is particularly relevant as it promotes social integration, health and well-being. Some studies that we have carried out confirm this. So, I will now talk about these studies and the results obtained. For the first study, we suggested the hypothesis that migrants have less satisfaction with life than the native populations, but only when they have not developed a good sense of community in the new country. The aim of this study was to analyze the influence of sense of community on satisfaction with life in native and migrant populations in Spain. The main hypothesis was that sense of community would moderate the negative effects associated with migrants' adaptations process. It was further hypothesized that there could be no difference in satisfaction with life between migrants with a high sense of community and the native populations. 1,646 participants were included in the study, of whom 946 were natives and 700 were migrants. Migrants came from Latin America, Eastern Europe and Africa. Data were collected using a random group sampling and survey methodology. Instruments used were brief sense of community scale and satisfaction with life scale. Regarding the plan of analysis, the study analyzes the interaction between migrant native status and sense of community. We divide the variable of sense of community into three equal groups. Thus, we obtained a design with two independent variables, origin, migrant versus native, and sense of community, with three levels, low, medium, and high. 
satisfaction with life was the dependent variable. Results confirm that satisfaction with life is higher in natives than in migrants when the level of sense of community of both groups is low. However, when sense of community is high in both groups, there are no statistically significant difference between the native populations and the migrants. Migrants with high sense of community show similar levels of satisfaction with life than natives. As it can be seen in the figure, we can conclude that sense of community is key for migrants when it comes to their social integration. This is directly related to satisfaction with life. The aim of the second study was to confirm whether sense of community could add as a moderating variable of the negative effects from discrimination and therefore it could help increase migrants' psychosocial well-being. The figure shows the theoretical model. Sense of community is considered the epicenter of the investigation. The study advocates for the protective effect of sense of community against the perception of discrimination and its negative consequences on the variables of psychological distress, satisfaction with life, and social exclusion feelings. The total number of participants consists of 1,714 migrants from Eastern Europe, Africa and Latin America. Data were collected using a random root sampling and survey methodology. The variables analyzed were perceived discrimination, sense of community, psychological distress, satisfactions with life and social exclusion feelings. In order to calculate the network of relations from the suggested model, in the figure multiple regressions were carried out with perceived discrimination, sense of community and interaction, both as predictor variables. Gender, geographical origin, age and chain of residence in the city were considered covariables. The rest of variables were considered as dependent from the regression equation. These analyses were conducted using the process instrument. Sense of community plays a moderating role on the negative effects of perceived discriminations regarding the variables of psychological distress, satisfaction with life, and social exclusion feelings. The effects of these variables are lower when migrants have higher sense of community, whilst consequences are more negative for those migrants with low sense of community. As an example, the figure shows the results from the moderating effect of sense of community on psychological distress. It can be seen how the effect of discrimination on psychological distress is lower when migrant sense of community is higher. The same result is observed with the rest of variables. Results from both studies confirm the need to create a developed specific intervention strategies to promote migrants' sense of community. 
Some of these strategies are the following. Strategies aim at training professionals who work with migrants and provide them with better cultural competences. The strategies aim at promoting the process of migrant reception in host community. For instance, programs at schools and neighborhoods. The schools are key space to promote sense of community. And finally, strategies aim at providing migrants with resources for their social integration and a multiple sense of community. For instance, by promoting their active participation in community space. Thank you for your attention.